What's your dream university? Stanford. Oxford. LSE. McGill. Cambridge. What about you? AUS. <laughs> 迈向世界名校的阶梯, hey, good morning, class. Hey, uh, today we will learn about the production of X ray and uh, the X ray spectrum. Right. So, uh, we did an uh, introduction yesterday. Right. So, can you share with me how is X ray produced? Mission, how is X ray produced? You have a cathode. Hey, uh, this is to produce this uh, electron source, right? Okay, source are electrons. Okay, so it's heated. Then, so some electrons will be released, right? So after the election is released, next part, what do we need to do? The electrons hit the anode. How do we make sure the electron hit the anode? Uh, increase the potential difference. Yes, we, we produce a very large right, electric field between the cathode and the anode, right? So the anode is a electron, uh, is a metal target. So in this process, okay, we use a P, we use a high PD to accelerate the electrons, right? So they will have enough kinetic energy to hit the anode, okay? So when they reach the anode, okay, there is a Phenomenon, right? We call, uh, we call it the name of phenomenon. Remember, I mentioned you have a atom nucleus, right? Then the electrons they come here. Okay. So what happened to the electron? Bro, what happened to the electron? They will deviate, right? Or they will lose kinetic energy, right? Why will they lose kinetic energy? Because the nucleus is it's positive charge, right? Positive charge nucleus. Then the electron here, they will be attracted to the nucleus. Okay, so okay, so for example, this one will be okay, attracted here. Okay? And the second electron, it will also deviate, but any difference? Smaller deviation. The reason is because this electron is further away from the nucleus, right? So maybe like this. Okay? So this one may be like this. And this one, uh, just very slightly, right? Okay, this phenomenon we call it. Start with letter B. What's the name of the process? B R. Ah, uh, B R A K, right? Breaking. Uh, okay. So in this breaking process, the electron will lose energy. <coughs> So this loss in energy is then converted to where does this energy go? Actually, release photon, right? Energy conservation. So it will release photon. <laughs> Mm. 
this photon is not uh, uh, visible, right? It's not in the visible region, so it's called the uh, X-ray photon. Okay, X-ray photon. <coughs> okay, so that, that's what we learned uh, during the last lesson. So today we'll continue to look at the spectrum of X-ray. Right, so look at your notes. <coughs> okay, the spectrum. Okay. Looks like this, right? So on the vertical axis is the intensity. Okay, the horizontal axis is the wavelength of the X-ray, right? Then look at the shape. Right, you have a okay hump, right? Okay. So <coughs> this X-ray spectrum consists of two parts. Right. The first part is the continuous region, right? It's the, you can see this like, continuous region. This one looks like a hump. <coughs> Then there's another part, right? There are some peaks here and here. So we call them uh, peaks. Okay. <coughs> okay so uh, you may wonder, right, how are they produced? Right, so actually, uh, hump and peaks are the names we give for it. But the scientific name for the hump, right? What is the name? Can you look at your nose? What is the name of the hump? How do we call it? Continuous, continuous spectrum. And the sharp peaks, we call it characteristic lines. Okay, the peaks are called the characteristic lines. Okay. So next, we will, we will study how are they produced. Right. So first, let's look at the continuous spectrum. Let me read this part. Okay, that's how we already covered, right? When the electron hits the metal surface, it will undergo breaking, right? Then they will release photon. Okay? Then why there is a range of wavelength here? Okay, can someone tell me the reason? Can you link this and this? Why there is a range of wavelength? Right, Jaman. Because the electrons will lose different amounts of energy when they collide with metal surface. Okay, so. Yeah. Have a range of energy. Mm. And since the wavelength is uh, uh, um, proportional to energy, so uh, a range of wavelength is produced. Okay. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So first, <coughs> the electrons. Right, lose different amount of kinetic energy during the collision or during the breaking. <coughs> okay, because 
That's how we already discussed, right? The electrons that are closer to the nucleus will be will be breaking, will undergo larger breaking, right? The electrons that are further away from the nucleus will undergo less breaking, right? So, so they will lose different amount of kinetic energy uh, during the collision and breaking. The next. So, like Tamman mentioned, right, the loss in energy, right, is converted to the actual photon. Okay, because they lose different amount of kinetic energy, it means the photon produced also have a range of energy, right? Yes. photons produced will have a range of energy. Then how do we calculate the energy of photon? Okay. We covered this before, right, in the last chapter. The formula is energy equals to H C over lambda, right? Right. So uh, H and C are constant. Okay. So the lambda, right? will depend on the energy of the photon. Okay? So you have a, a range of wavelength. That's why we have a continuous spectrum, right? It, uh, okay, and it looks like a normal distribution, normal distribution curve. Okay. <coughs> okay. Any question? So you need to memorize uh, these three points for your exams, right? Okay. How is continuous spectrum being produced? Okay, uh, no question, let's move on to the next. Okay, so you may notice that uh, there is a minimum wavelength on your spectrum, right? And there is a name for it. What's the name? Xinxin? What is the name of this minimum wavelength? Cut off wavelength. Okay. So from the graph, you can see is the minimum wavelength. Right. So ne the next question is, why do we have a minimum wavelength? Why do we have a minimum wavelength? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Almost correct. Okay. So let's see how it's produced. Let me put down in words. Okay. Cut off wavelength. Oh, it's the minimum wavelength. Okay. It happens when. Okay. The electrons lose all the Ke. Right. Or. Uh, let's okay. I'll start from this formula. Let's okay. AC over lambda. Okay. One lambda is minimum. It tells you the energy is maximum, right? Okay. So first, you can say that a minimum wavelength corresponds to the maximum photon energy, right? Okay. 
minimum wavelength corresponds to maximum energy. Okay. Then when the photon will have maximum energy is that okay, the electron loses all its kinetic energy, right? Lose all the kinetic energy. Okay. So this happens. When an electron okay, loses all its kinetic energy, in a single collision with the metal surface, Single collision means collide, okay? Then it will come to a stop. Okay? So sometimes you can also rephrase it, uh, like uh, lose all this energy or come to a full stop. Uh. So this happen, after this happens, then the photon will have maximum energy, hence minimum wavelength. Is it clear to you? Okay, then I have another question. Right, so what is this? Uh, what does this color wavelength depend on? Okay, what are the factors that will affect this color wavelength? Energy level difference. Energy level difference. Any other suggestion? Javan, what are the factors that will affect this cutoff wavelength? Number of photons. Number of photons will affect the intensity more, right? So for this cutoff wavelength, remember just now we say, right? You have a you have a PD, right? You have a PD V across the actual tube. Okay. So the KE will affect this cut wavelength, right? The kinetic energy of the photon will affect this cut wavelength. The sun then what will affect the kinetic energy? Oh, The potential uh, potential difference of the voltage between the cathode and anode, right? So we can construct an equation. So in this process, okay, is the electrical potential energy okay converted to kinetic energy. So how do we express electrical potential energy? What's the formula? Right. Okay. What's the what's formula? Oh, the charge is E, right? Then the PD is V, right? So E V equals to okay, half M V squared, then equals to C over lambda lambda minimum. 
So if you compare this, okay, this and this, okay, when the lambda minimum is the smallest, okay, okay, then it means the V needs to be the largest or larger, right? So we can see that lambda minimum depends on the PD. Okay, because HC and E they are all constant. Okay, so you need to remember this. Okay, this formula. Lambda minimum depends on the accelerating voltage right, in the X-ray tube. Okay, any question? Okay, no question. Uh, let's move on to the next part. Okay, let's look at the peaks and the characteristic lines. characteristic lines. <coughs> so first, right, let's recap the structure of an item. Okay. So for item, you have a nucleus at the center, right? Then in around the nucleus, you have some Shells. Okay. okay. So the first shell is called K shell, right? Second shell is called L shell. The shell is called M shell. Okay. Yeah, I believe you have learned this in chemistry, right? So electrons are in these shells. They are moving in these shells. So for example, you have electron here. Okay, you have electron here. And this also it has electrons. So when the electron from the cathode hits the metal target, it may okay, remove an electron okay, from the shell. So look at the box, right? Initially you have the you have electron here. Then there's an incoming electron. Then there's a possibility that okay, this electron is, is not out from the shell. Okay. If this electron is not out, okay, then there will be a empty space, right? There will be empty space there. And we call it we can see, right? We call it we can see. And we can see. Okay. And of course this electrons th this electron will go away, right? Uh, after collision, right, this electron just go away. And then this electron come out, then you have a vacancy here. Okay. And remember we learned about energy levels in the last chapter, right? So when there is a empty space or vacancy in the lower energy levels, then what will happen? What happened? Electrons in the high energy level, they will they will excite, right? They will excite to form to fill up the gap. So this is the possibility, right? So this is tr okay transition number one. Okay, another one. This is number two. Okay. So let's uh, analyze them separately. Okay. For the first transition, okay. the electron digs side from L shell to K shell. Right. 
So during the excitation, okay. then what we uh, the sorry, it's a de-excitation, right? So what will you see during the de-excitation? What is produced in the de-excitation process? Photon. photon, right? You have photons, right? So in this process, you release a photon. And the photon energy depends on the, the energy level difference, right? Energy depends on level difference. Okay, so the excitation. So this photon, we, we call it uh, K, K alpha. Okay. Uh, this photon, we call it K alpha. The second possibility, right? Second possibility is from M shell to K shell. So during this process, again, it's a de-excitation. Then you release photon with energy. Equals to E M minus E, e K, right? So this photon, we call it K beta. Okay, why we call it K something, okay? It's because the, un the vacancy is in K shell, right? Vacancy is in K shell. So we call it K alpha and K beta. So let's come back to the spectrum. Then can you tell me which one is K alpha, which one is K beta? The small, the left one or the right one? This high, this right one is K alpha. Right? This one is K alpha. This one is K beta. Okay. Can you give me a reason? Can you give me a reason why this one is K alpha, this one is K beta? Higher. First, look at the wavelength. Okay, there are two ways you can look at it, right? You can either look at it uh, from the wavelength perspective or from the intensity perspective. Okay, so just now, uh, Jiawen mentioned that uh, the intensity is higher. Why? How do we explain this difference in intensity? Tell me. Mm. Intensity. Uh. It's not energy. It's about. Probability. Uh, 
Mm. From M, M to K, right? Okay, yes. So, yes. So it's about probability. Okay, the probability of the transition from L to K is larger than from M to K. The reason is because because the the, the this yeah because this one is closer, right? L to K is closer. Than M to K, right? It's closer, so it's more likely to happen, right? Larger probability. Okay, more likely to happen. Okay, this is the intensity. Okay. Okay, second one is about the, the wavelength, right? Okay, so you can see that lambda of k alpha is larger than the lambda of k beta. Okay. How do we explain this? How do we explain the, the wavelength difference? The energy of k alpha is smaller than k beta. Okay, yes. Because wavelength is larger, it means the energy is lesser, right? Then why the energy is lesser? Because of the energy level difference, right? From L to K, the energy level difference is smaller, right? Then from M to K, the energy level difference is larger. Right? We learned this before. Okay, so uh, delta E equals to H C over lambda. Okay. So the difference okay, the difference between L and K is smaller than M and K. Okay, so it has higher, it has lower energy. Right? K alpha has lower energy, then it means higher wavelength. So K alpha is to the right of K beta. Okay. Make sure you know how to explain this difference. The difference in the intensity and the difference in the location. Okay, okay any question? Okay, so next, let's see, right, why it is called char characteristic lines. Okay. For this particular metal, right, you can see the location of the peak is here. Okay. For another metal, okay, the location of the K alpha and K beta will be different. Okay. So maybe like this. This one is another metal. Okay. Can someone give me an explanation of this? Why different metal will have different location of the characteristic lines? Xi Jin? Just how we discussed, the location of these lines depends on the energy level difference, right? For different metal, the energy level will be different, right? So they have different energy level difference. Then it means 
Okay, they have different wavelength. Okay, that's a reason, right? So why we call it characteristic lines? Because different metal. Okay, have different energy levels. Different metals have different energy levels. Okay, and because okay, the character uh, the lines depends on the energy level difference. So it is a characteristic of the target metal. So take note this, right? Characteristic of the target metal. The location of the lines depends on the metal. So actually, we can use this method to, to check the materials. Right? What are the materials? We can shine an X-ray beam on the surface. Then based on the location of the characteristic lines in the spectrum, we can determine the type of the metal. Right? So that is a real life application. So make sure you know how to explain the okay, continuous spectrum, okay, the cutoff wavelength, okay, the position of the characteristic lines, and the difference in the intensity, and the difference in the wavelength. Okay. So that are the important concepts of this uh, actual production chapter. Okay. So uh, that will be the end of our lesson. Right. Uh, so go back and do the practice questions in your notes.